Aloha everyone. This is February 6th, 2016. And as always, I'm coming to you from my rainforest home in Kauai. Although it's a very bright and beautiful sunny day today. But I set the atmosphere in Second Life at the nearest Star Sanctuary for night. A nice mystical blue night because we're going to be talking about things in the sky. And of course, things can come into the sky in daytime too, but I just thought it would be a more mystical statement around the unknown. And uh, while people have fears of the unknown, and I know that I do as well, certain things, it's really good to try to adopt an attitude of having more excitement about the unknown, that good things are gonna happen instead of bad things. Of course, we always know that, you know, life brings us challenges, and sometimes we interpret them as bad. But if we always hold in our heart and mind that everything that comes to us will bring us something that's very needed in our life to help us appreciate, grow, and love more, then, it, then the world becomes a less scary place. So what I'm going to be talking to you about tonight is not going to be scary. It's going to be interesting, I hope, and um, affirmative that new things are coming, new things to our perspective, ancient things to be sure, but new to us. That is in the visual plane, things that we can see, feel, and perhaps even touch. There are so many things on YouTube now, uh, videos uh, showing marvelous occurrences on the planet. Yes, I know there's some really obviously fake stuff up there too, but I have sifted through and, and, and indeed been guided to certain videos that I certainly believe are genuine. And that highlight for us the really marvelous experiences that are going to be coming our way and that are in our midst really right now. I remember that years ago, um, when I was living in uh, Creston, Colorado, both came to me one time and said that um, uh, as I was looking out the window, and it's a beautiful, Creston is a beautiful, beautiful place, high in the Sangre de Cristo mountain range, the plateau of the San Luis Valley, the highest of the, lar the, the largest high um, plateau in the United States. In other words, it's the biggest one <laughs> that's so high up, 7,000 feet, and a beautiful place, very mystical. Crestone is, uh, according to Thoth, the uh, crown chakra of the, the uh, ascension grid of the planet. So I was, we, you know, I lived there uh, for seven years, I believe, something like that, assuming that I did. And one day I was looking out the window to a beautiful scene, a natural scene, you know, the mountains towering above the, the, the vegetation, the trees, blue sky. And he said to me, you know, there will come a time when people will look out their window and they will see things that they cannot explain. And it will be right there in front of them. It will f be fearful to some people. It needn't be, but it would be to some. And others will rejoice. And he said there will be people that simply will not be able to accept what is in front of their eyes, and yet it will be so prominent and so persistent that they can't ignore it. And those people will have a very difficult and challenging time in life. He said some of them would even go insane. But then he said also that most would not, and they would adjust, and they would come to their true senses and experience what it really is in the world that makes life precious and beautiful. And that is the flowering, the opening up of the senses in this way. And of course, those of us who already have those beliefs will look forward, and we look forward to that. Even we're going to have a bit of a difficult time sometimes because it's one thing to hope for it, to wish for it, but when it's in your midst, then you have to contend with the power it delivers. 
the beautiful power it delivers. And if you aren't in your own power, in your own being, where does that leave you? So these are all thoughts, feelings, ideas to think about. And yet we're here now. That was like, oh, about, gosh, maybe 10 years ago, longer than that probably, maybe 14 years ago. We've come a long way since then, a long way. And so now I'd like to share some video segments with you that have been making their way around the Internet. Perhaps you've seen some of these, but I am going to be commenting on them from a Akashic Thothic perspective. Breaking news on Highway 81 outside Stuttgart, Germany, where officials are investigating a strange occurrence that has baffled evening commuters. What started out as a regular day on the job for Ernst Becker, driver of a cargo truck, quickly turned into an out-of-this-world experience. This footage from the highway's closed-circuit cameras gives a glimpse of what happened. The truck was momentarily lifted off the highway, then dropped back on the ground. However, eyewitnesses claim to have seen a mysterious light hovering over the truck as this happened. We are live at the A81 with an eyewitness. Tell us, what have you seen? I was driving on the highway and suddenly there was this light. It was really bright and everything went so fast. Suddenly the truck was in the air. I don't know, it was strange. I'd never seen something like this before. An unidentified metal-like liquid was also discovered on the scene. And to add further mystery to this incident, the cargo of the truck is now missing. Residents who live around the vicinity have been asked to be vigilant and to keep an eye out for missing cargo. I am here am unteren Hengstecke Tunnel in Stuttgart, Deutschland, wo ein seltsames Fahrzeug von der Kamera angefangen wurde. Bei dem Fahrzeug handelt es sich vermutlich um die verlorene gegangene Ladung von dem Zwischenfall der sich auf der Bundesautobahn 81 letzte Woche ereignete. Wobei das Mehrwertigste daran lässt sich jedoch erkennen, wenn wir das von der Tunnelkamera aufgenommen Filmmaterial verlangsamen. Bemerken Sie das mysteriöse Licht, welches das Fahrzeug scheinbar verfolgt? Könnte es sich hierbei um das gleiche Licht handeln, durch den der Fracht-Lkw letzte Woche abgehoben wurde? Die Art und Weise, wie sich die beiden Zwischenfälle abgespielt haben, gibt Rätsel auf. Okay, I'm really not in the habit of running to the Akashic or Thoth for everything I see that interests me. If I did, I'd be constantly doing it. And I don't feel that I have to know the answer to everything. <laughs> First of all, it's obviously my experience and my answers, not the universal all answer. But even so, I still don't feel I have the need to, to do that, you know. Life is a mystery. I kind of like it that way at times. Uh, I'm not against information, certainly not, but I, I enjoy sort of the mystery of things. But, however, that said, once in a while, I just really need to know. <laughs> and so that's the case with this particular one, with this truck zooming up in that light. So here it goes, flash report from Thoth. And of course, this is coming through me, my perception, my Thothic streaming, connecting with this being I believe that communes with me. I'm not trying to make it any more or less than that, but this is what I received. The truck was apparently carrying something of an alien type uh, material that the uh, One World Legion, that's what Thoth refers to, the owl, as the uh, other people call secret government and the world order and whatever, you know, um, secret government. So the One World Legion and certain alien beings who were working with them uh, gave them or helped them develop a certain substance that was being transported in the truck. And this substance was extremely dangerous. Um, 
And so the ultra beings decided they would intervene. Now, this is difficult even for me to understand, so I can't especially logically explain it, but I'm going to do my best to give you some handle on it. And I did address some of it in the Black Knight article that I wrote. Why do they sometimes intervene and most times do not? I mean, we could really use their help down there, right? You know, I mean, they could do a lot of things for us <laughs> that they don't do. And they say, well, you know, it's, they, they say it's part of your own spiritual evolution. We can be here to help to guide, you know, in ways, but, you know, you have to be part, you have to take the action of your own spiritual evolution. And I can understand that. But why do they sometimes seem to break that rule and intervene like they did on this occasion? Well, according to Thoth, they do so when certain energy fields are united on the planet in a certain way. To allow them to do this without interfering with our, well, I hate to use the word destiny because Thoth and the Illuminaries and the Ultras and all that look at the word, how they use the word destiny or plant that in my mind, means something much more expanded than we think it does. So I'm, but I'm going to use the word destiny, say it might interfere with our destiny. But at the same time, I'm going to add the caveat that destiny in this sense is a much more mutable thing. Uh, it can change. It can form in different ways. But it is a divine statement. And they won't interfere with our divine statements. Only we can do that. It's far more complex than we can possibly understand. But there are inroads where they can help us in very immediate ways like they did with the truck. And that's going to be happening more and more, Thos says, because we're reaching the point where uh, we have more open-ended uh, statements that allow for that aid in that way. So, according to him, that's what happened there on the highway. Okay, now here's another one. I think I'm going to disable the sound on this because it's just a bunch of noise and stuff. And um, I considered that this might be a hoax, a fake video, because it was so dramatic. But uh, I decided that it wasn't. So let's play it, and uh, let's take a look at it first. Kind of a wow moment again, right? Well, for this one, Thoth pretty well says the same thing. This was another incident where cargo was lifted that needed to be taken. And um, no one was hurt. Uh, they were simply relocated very quickly, like, oops, what happened? It just appears, you know, they were taken, but immediately moved in, in time, space-time to another spot on planet Earth, and there they were, and they were all fine, and everything was great, and the helicopter was flying along just fine, but their cargo bay was empty. So uh, it was another similar situation. Now this one is a bit different. Uh, I love third phase of moon. They have a lot of good things. The problem is they beat the horse to death. You know, they keep talking about it over and over and over. <laughs> so we're not going to go through the whole, video, the whole video. We're just going to, you know, look at this picture. Um, I'm not sure. It's New Zealand. 2016. It's a new sighting. I think they may have another picture here. Let's see. They don't will cut it. Here we are. Another view of it. Obviously, 
several different views of the same phenomenon. So they're back to square one again. So with this one, um, Thoth is speaking again about the Pyramus Radius Matrix, and I've written some things on this before, obviously, about the pillars of light coming down. And This is all part of a um, creating more of a, of a format for the uh, internal structure of the Pyramidus Radius, which is a holographic field. Well, we're in a holographic field on the Earth, but there are levels of holographs. So this is a holograph within a holograph, you might say. And um, the really dramatic video that I showed on one of my articles, and you know, I'm actually going to go to that right now and fit it into the picture. So here we are on this recent article that I wrote, put together, Holographic Pyramids, It's Beginning. And um, in, uh, two years ago, I spoke about uh, what Thoth told me having to do with the, um, the holographic pyramids forming inside the pyramid's radius, that people would begin to see them. I'm not going to actually show the video right now. You can always go to my uh, Crystal and Matrix site, and this is called Holographic Pyramids at His Beginning. Um, but I show that here, what, what had been shown. And here is the image that was done recently. And um, just take a look at this. There's the ship, you can see it. And you'll notice that the pyramid, when it comes back to the pyramid, it's not a solid pyramid. If you look at it, it's interdimensional, like it's holographic. And that is definitely a, a starship of some kind. And there is the pyramid. See it kind of how it kind of blends with the clouds. So the beams that we saw in the other, the beam that we saw in the other video, and the many other beams that I've been putting videos up about and photos up about, these are not harp. None of this is harp. Uh, there it is, a close-up of it. It is uh, the pyramidus radius. I mean, harp is not doing sophisticated stuff like this. Now, I don't know what this is. This looks more like a... Um, no, it's very strange. I'm not sure what that is. It's not really the same thing. You can tell that the other you can see through, and that you cannot. That might have been a Photoshop version. I'm not, it's hard to tell. But the actual first part of the video and showing that, you know, that's what's going on on the planet right now. And yes, harp is certainly active out there, and it does some funky things in the sky sometimes, but it's very ununiform. It's not like this. This is... Uh, According to Thoth, this is um, the real deal, and it's exciting and wonderful, and it will certainly counteract, eventually, rather sooner than later, the whole heart situation. You know, it's coming to an end. Everything of that nature right now is coming to an end in our lifetimes. Say our, you know, the collective our, but uh, in many people's lifetimes, because um, we can see it falling apart before our eyes. Different countries and nations rising up against it, mostly in, in uh, peaceful protest, some not, of course. Um, and what's going on here in our country with our with Bernie Sanders and the grassroots movement of just, you know, dis disengaging us from the um, the owl standard, the one world legion standard of politics and nations and presidents and all of that. And it can be accomplished, um, not easily, but heck of a lot more easily than it would have had taken if it had taken place ten years ago. It couldn't have taken place ten years ago. 
So all of these things are in concert together. From the holographic pyramids to Bernie running from president, they're all linked together. And it's a movement. And that is why there are some inroads now for the ultras to do things like helping us out blocking this particularly extremely hazardous whatever it is. And it's I guess it's not a need to know, so he's not telling me what it is, that they just simply are not allowing to be transported, taken to whatever location for processing, you know, it's just being taken. Now, I kind of left the best for the last. I mean, it's also fantastic. It's hard to choose the best on the ones that I selected here. But this one is really quite, quite amazing. And uh, I turned the sound down. It's somewhere probably in, in, in Africa or a country around there, you know, because of the language and the people and, and all, everything that's going on. But these people are going crazy, man. They're screaming, they're yelling, but you know what? They're not fearful. They're saying, praise the Lord. And, you know, they're, they're like, uh, it's like a religious uh, uh, convention or something. So, um, but just look at what's happening here. Now, it starts off kind of slow, but I wanted you to see how there's not that much there at first and how it builds. I may cut through to the end at some point here. At first you think it's a rainbow from the way that, and it's not a very good film, so you think, well, I'm just taking a picture of a rainbow. But no, it's not a rainbow. I progressed a little in the film now. You can see it's getting brighter, brighter, sort of an orange light forming. There's no more rainbow effect. It's more of an orange light. It's an object. As it's very, you know, unfortunately, the film is very difficult to follow. Look how bright it's getting, like a, another sun. I skipped along a little further. You see it's even brighter. As we progress toward the end, and that's pretty well it. It just ends while it's still continuing. So, the big question, what was it? Well, according to what I've received from Thoth, it's kind of like it's a seeding. It's a seeding from the ultras uh, through the pyramidus radius matrix. It's like a package of, of qualified energy, quantum, quantum, quantumified <laughs> and qualified for a specific um, energy boost to the pyramidus radius matrix. And when I say that, you have to understand that the human beings on this planet are the progenitors. Progenitor? I'm not sure that's the right word. Let me take another one. They are the um, co-creators of this matrix, this pyramidus radius matrix. So when you say that it is there to see the matrix, it's there to see us too. The matrix in us that expands outward from us that causes us to see, experience, and feel these things. That doesn't mean they're false. What we're seeing in the skies, the stars, all of this, we're seeing it from, from the inner through, through to the outer. It's, it's real too, but it's also hologram. See, we, we cannot get our minds around, or at least it's difficult, to say that a holograph is a real thing. We think, oh, it's just a picture of something. It's not real. But it is real, according to Thoth. 
because reality is something that we just haven't grasped yet, the actual meaning and nature of what we call reality. So that said, this very real experience of a seeding was penetrating, and it was going into the planet at that particular location. It would be interesting to know where that was, but I haven't been able to find that. And so when you look up in the sky, especially the night sky, know that there's so much at work going on on our behalf by beings that love us dearly, that are a part of us in so many ways. So as Bernie Sanders said recently, do not give in to the world of despair. Don't go down that path because there's a beautiful and wonderful experience just opening up before us, and it needs our support. Aloha to all of you. Love you. Bye-bye.